All right, welcome to another episode of Clean Code. Today we're going to be talking about how to measure distances using the Unidrive M700 and a little code. Now, for those who don't know why you would ever want to measure distances with a drive, here's an example. Let's say your company produces square pipe and you want to make a new product that has holes in it, like this one. Now, you might say, I want some sort of system that verifies the distance of the holes. Well, you could do something like this. All you would have to do is add a line encoder and some sort of device that can see the holes and the drive can measure the distances between the holes. To start off, let's show you how the free system works. Here you can see I have the software package called Connect Open and it's online with a drive so we can actually show you how it functions. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to Menu 3, Speed Control and Position Feedback. Now, I want to do it under the block diagrams. And the reason for that is it'll give you a better idea of what's going on. Of course, we can get to all the same settings and stuff as parameters, but you can see there's a lot here. So let's go back to the block diagram. So I'm going to double click on menu three, speed, control, and position feedback. It's really the position feedback portion of menu three that we care about. Here you can see I have opened up the window that most of you guys are familiar with. What you may not be familiar with are these little red and green squares here. What they are are buttons to take you to other pages. Now you see this red one here, it will take you to menu two. That's away from menu three where we want to be. All of these green buttons will take you to different pages within menu three. And the reason it's like this is because it's impossible to fit all of the diagram in one nice little page. And so this is the way they opted to do it. So where I'm gonna suggest we go is we're gonna click on encoder simulation. Now this drive has a simulated output and that is not what we're looking for. But what this did do is it gave us some more pages to go to and the page I really wanna to go to is the free system. So I'm gonna click here. Now on this page, you're gonna see that there are two free systems. We got the first free system called F1 freeze and the second freeze system called F2 freeze. So we're only gonna use one freeze in this particular example. So we're gonna work on this particular freeze system. You're gonna notice that there are a couple things that we need to set up. So the first thing you need to do is decide which of the two digital inputs you're gonna use for your registration sensor or your hole sensor or whatever sensor it is. I'm gonna use input four. So you can see it's already selected to input four. If you wanted to make the change, you would just double click here and this window would pop open and you would just select the appropriate setting you desire. The next thing is the freeze mode. Here we also have a couple options. The first option and the option we're gonna use is rising edge, first time only. You could also do falling edge or every single rising edge or every single falling edge. But for most applications, you're going to do rising edge one time. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Over here on the right side is which encoder you want to capture. So this drive has two encoders that can be brought into the base of the drive. The first one's called P1, and the second one is called P2. You also could capture a time, but the time is a system time, and so it will be covered in a different video. In the example we're doing today, I'm going to be capturing P1. Right here is the parameter that shows you what the captured value is. And right here is a freeze flag showing that we've captured it. So right now you can see that I'm toggling on input number four. You can see the bit turning on and off. And now I'm gonna turn the motor and I'm gonna to toggle the input four again. You can see that this value didn't change. That's because it has already been seen. What you need to do as a programmer is after you record this value, you reset this to a value of off. Now the thing is armed again and will now capture the next time this goes to a rising edge. So you can see the position changed and that this turned back on again. So simply all we do in the program is we watch for this flag to turn on when it's on, we capture this data and we set this back off. 
and it's ready for the next capture. All right, let me show you the program I wrote to implement the free system. I am using an MCI 210 module. You could easily use an MCI 200 module with the exact same code. And it is possible to use the onboard 700 program and its clock task. However, the distances between the registration marks need to be far enough away that the code has time to execute and see every single registration that comes through. So I would suggest using a 200 or a 210 module. So how this code works is the clock task is going to measure the distance between the registration marks and turn on a little light or a digital output that says whether it is good or bad. First thing it does is it looks at menu 3 parameter 104. We talked about this here in just a moment ago, but menu 3 parameter 104 is the freeze flag. When it turns on, we have new data. So we look at it. Do we have new data? Yes. Then we copy the freeze position that is in menu 3 parameter 103. After that, we reset the flag arming the free system so that it can capture the next registration mark that goes through. After that, I took the difference between the new position and the old position. Please note the very first time you're going to get wrong data here as it hasn't seen an old capture. So your program may need to be a little bit smarter. So after we get the change in position by subtracting the new and old position, we then set the old position equal to the new position so that it is ready for the next time we do our math on line 7. Okay, And the last bit of code here is basically a statement that says if the delta position is greater than the max window, then it's bad. We're, we're too large. So turn off the light. This particular parameter, menu 8, parameter 11, is the invert to digital output 1. So when I set it to off or 0, it means that the light is off. Okay, I did the same thing here. If the delta position is smaller than our min window, then we also turn the light off. However, if it's not bigger and not less than our window, it must be within the window and therefore it's good. So let's look at the free willing task. I have this line of code here just for the purpose of debugging so that we can see that as I turn encoder by hand, it's going to show you how many turns have passed since the last time we've captured data. It is not required for the code. This line here is setting up our target position. Now, the way you read this is, I want it to work every four turns of the encoder. I want to see a registration mark. The encoder system in this drive defaults that all encoders are upscaled to 65,536 counts per one turn. And so that's where this is coming from. So one turn of a motor will always count up to 65,536. So I want to see after four turns of the motor a registration mark. Now I have the window and I said I want to be within half of a turn. Now you can make this smaller but that works for me for this demonstration. So I said within a half of a turn of this, I want that to be my window. So now these two pieces of code are going to set up the windows. The max window is the target position plus the window, and the min is the target position minus the window. All right? So let's go online and actually watch this work. Here you can see that my encoder is counting up. Now I'm going to stop at a position of 2.5 inches. Okay? So I am going to capture this position over here. Okay, so the free system happened. You can see it captured 164029, right? So this is in pure counts. And you can see that the counter here reset for debugging purposes. The question you have to ask is, is this within our window? Of course it's not. And so the, if you look at the delta position, it is less than our minimum window, and so the output is false. Let's try this again. Let's turn the motor four revs. Okay, I turned it just past four revs. Let's trigger it again. Now you come over here, you can see that it captured two, six, seven, eight, eight, seven 
which of course is between our min and max window and therefore the light turns on. Okay, let's try this one last time at 4.6. Oh, let me back up. 4.6 revs. You can see it captured the data, it's greater than the max window, and therefore the light's off again. Thanks for watching another episode of Clean Code. If you're still bored, feel free to check one of these other videos out. And if you want, please subscribe.